Collagen is one of those proteins that's had a lot of indecision surrounding its effectiveness, especially in relation to skin. But I'd like to spend some time discussing some new science on collagen in our joints, especially for middle-aged and older individuals. In a recent study introduced to me by yet another Physionic Insider, researchers identified two things that supposedly encourage collagen synthesis in relation to our joints. And since collagen synthesis is important for joint health because the extracellular matrix, the makeup of our joints, including tendons and ligaments, is largely made of collagen, it's important to raise it when possible. So, what are these two factors? And what did the study actually find? And what can we take away from this study? This is the study. And as you can tell by the title, the two factors are resistance training and another is consumable collagen. But there's, as usual, a lot of nuance on both that we'll need to discuss. Quickly, the researchers gave the same participants either a placebo, a low dose of collagen, or a high dose of collagen, including vitamin C in all conditions. So each participant acted as their own control, known as a repeated measures design. They consumed each masked drink on different days and then performed four sets of 10 repetitions of leg press. The researchers then took blood samples for the next six hours. You can imagine that these people were pretty hungry after all that. I mean, considering that they came in fasted and then they had a measly collagen drink and then they worked out and then they had to stay in the lab and refrain from eating for another six hours. Not so fun. Anyway, what did the researchers find? Well, two things. One, they measured blood P1NP levels. That's the abbreviation for pro-collagen or an immature form of collagen. Now, typically your cells generate collagen in a pro-collagen form, process it in the Golgi apparatus, which is an organelle found inside most cells, and then secrete it out of the cell to be acted on by a series of enzymes that convert it to mature non-pro-collagen. It's almost like the uh, pro label is actually amateur. This is an elegant experiment because the researchers are able to measure newly synthesized collagen directly. So if pro collagen labeled as P1NP goes up, that's an indication of more of this collagen synthesis. And we see that here. We have P1NP blood levels on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal. Note that the minus one is the baseline measure, completely fasted, and before consuming one of the three drinks. And anything after zero is after drinking the collagen and after doing the leg press. So to orient you, the black line is the placebo, the no collagen, and the bluish line is the low collagen dose, and the pink line is the high collagen dose. Clearly, although also confirmed by the correct statistics, P1NP was increased in both collagen conditions, indicating collagen synthesis. Now, if you think about this a bit longer, you might note that I mentioned resistance training increases collagen synthesis, yet here we don't see any improvement. I'll discuss that shortly because the researchers addressed that too. First, let me show you another measure, and then I'd like to add some more context to all this, including a problem that you may have missed in this data that I already showed you. Uh, beyond the flat line on resistance training, that is. Another measure the researchers were interested in is collagen breakdown. Remember, we covered collagen synthesis, so the production, but this might be a moot point if collagen breakdown also occurs, especially from strenuous activity like resistance training. For that, the researchers looked at a collagen degradation marker called beta-CTX. Here's those data. On the left, we have the same line graph over time, and on the right, we have the area under the curve, or the total effect. What's striking here is that collagen supplementation made no difference on collagen breakdown, but that's not a bad thing because all three conditions experienced a reduction compared to baseline. That means that resistance training is likely the greater driver of reducing collagen breakdown, not collagen supplementation itself which I think is a pretty neat finding if it holds true. Okay, quickly, there's some information comparing protein against collagen, as well as optimal dosing for maximum effect. I'll be covering that in the extended version of this video, including different independently tested brands. If you're interested, along with access to all my work, it's included with the Physionic Insiders, which is uh, linked in the description. Okay, how do we put all this together? And what does this mean for you? 
Well, let me address the resistance training aspect first. The researchers speculate that the reason resistance training had no effect at raising blood procollagen levels is because the total amount of work performed was small. In addition, they mention many other studies, including this one, indicate resistance training typically increases collagen-related protein synthesis. It's also possible because this study was in middle-aged men that other studies are able to show an effect because they were in younger participants. Either way, there's more evidence indicating resistance training does raise collagen synthesis than not. And one more thing that I mentioned, a problem with the data. Keep in mind, we've been focused on blood levels of pro-collagen, but that does not speak to joint collagen production directly. Now, before your eyes snap to the title of this video, there are two points to be made in favor of this being joint-related collagen synthesis. One, Collagen type 1, the one that we've been looking at, is largely found in the joints, in the tendons and the ligaments, as mentioned before. Still, it is also found in other areas of the body, so this blood measure is not ideal, even if it is suggestive. However, too, in this other study, the researchers directly probed connective tissue, like that in joints, and assessed that there is still a likely increase in synthesis, confirming the more generalized results that we see in this first study. Now, to be transparent, I say likely because the results of this study did not reach statistical significance, but the study wasn't powered to detect an effect on connective tissue synthesis, and the results were still very close to significant. That isn't to mention that other studies indicate effects, aside from the ones that we've been focused on. Now, what do we take away from this? Two things. One, that collagen supplementation seems to increase joint-related, although not exclusive, collagen synthesis truly supercharging it over 50% more than when not consuming it. I would like to see more robust measures like actual size and function changes in a joint through long-term studies, but this is a solid first step. So collagen consumption seems to work at increasing collagen production. Now two, Resistance training facilitates the increase in joint collagen production, and this was also more directly shown in this study, although some of the nuances on volume, intensity, duration of exposure uh, need to be detailed in future studies. But we don't need to stop here because guess what? I have more on this topic right here. If thou art so inclined, I'll speak with you over there.